Welcome to Satisfactory Update 8. My name is Nilaus, and apparently I'm on a mission to ruin Satisfactory for everyone. How am I ruining the game exactly? Well, according to the YouTube comment section, by making useful blueprints, I am ruining the fun for everyone. So this video is aimed at people who are not afraid of words like generic and modular when it comes to talking about designs and blueprints. With that disclaimer out of the way, let me outline the objective of this video. Aside from just flying around my Mega Pyramid base, I am going to design some generic modular blueprints that you can use for many different purposes in your own base. I'll be using these created blueprints to quickly and easily create several new modular factories in my Pyramid base. Aside from the obvious advantages of being able to easily build and expand your base, these also provide a solution to a problem I've had in Satisfactory for a long time. The fact that moving a base takes exactly as long time as it did to build it in the first place. This can, for me at least, lead to some paralysis, uh, since I don't want to misplace my factories, hence I end up building something temporary and which will of course last the entire playthrough. With modular blueprints, it is easy to move and expand existing factories, since they can easily be constructed and deconstructed. All the blueprints you see me use and see me build uh, are going to be available. Uh, the first iteration is going to be a little bit experimental and I am probably going to leak a lot of errors, so I don't want to make them uh, available to everyone, but I'm making them available to Patreon supporters. So if you are a Patreon supporter, you can get an early access to all these blueprints. Then we will be polishing them and refining them so that when Satisfactory Update 8 hits early access instead of experimental, then I'll be having some really crisp blueprints that I will share with everyone. Hope that is a okay balance of giving a little perk to patrons and also giving everyone access to everything in due time when they're ready. If you're not scared of the prospect of getting into crisp modular designs, then hit the like button and subscribe and let's dive on in. We are going to start with a template build and this template will serve as, a, as the foundation for all of our factories, if at all possible, because I want them to look the same. So this is the format of how we want to, to build it. Let me just walk through it. First of all, um, these are panels, light panels, and I also have light panels down here. They don't load when you stand down a blueprint, so we just have to go around and go in and go out of each of them. With the lights turned on, it looks a lot better. Also in here, now we have working lights. These are uh, panels, uh, they are signs, and I'm just gonna show you how to build this because it's a little bit uh, uh, interesting because if I take this panel, I can't build it on the roof. So uh, uh, what you need to do is you need to build like this doesn't matter really how long it, it is but it just has to be where you can get it and then now you can build it on the on the side of this and you can remove this afterwards and then it's just copy and paste and you use a little bit of a dim light here and uh, just these colors if you want to use the same they're slightly different tunes of colors and there's also like this radial uh, gradient so that it gets a little bit softer light than the very harsh white light Anyway, this uh, location is too high. This is my service floor where I'll be keeping all of my belts, potentially also pipes, and uh, uh, it's uh, not really much uh, to show. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I'm just going to remove this. Here. So uh, up here, this is where we're going to be building our actual factory. So let's get started on it. The first thing we want to build is a smelter factory. So a smelter factory is going to be uh, as many smelters as we can squeeze in to this part. We can either make it this way, um, or I can make it that way. Either way is uh, just fine, whether you want it to point outwards or inwards. I think we'll point it outwards. And then uh, we have to use the space as as wisely as possible, because there isn't a whole lot of space in uh, in these blueprints. Uh, I mentioned that, but we'll, uh, we'll make the best of it, don't worry. Also need to make sure that I'm actually aligning it correctly. And then I am going to get these floors, floor holes here. They will be out here as well. And then I'll be building it uh, they can go really close and then we get the inbounds and outbounds and this will be now we'll start here in hold on that's the mark one there so you have to place it and then it connects here i reverse it place it and you hear that little pling that means it's connecting there that little pling then we have stuff down here. So now what we can do is we need, we know that the middle one will be our inbound. So we're gonna be making some uh, lines here. This is one, two, and three. We can take these two out, this one out, up. And we can just uh, take from here. Uh, again, mark one, inbound. Pretty simple. And now that is 
basically our inbound is coming up here. I want to take the inbound up uh, usually and then have the outbound lower here. That's going to be a merger and pointing again away from us. Just making sure that yes, this is the inbound and then we can take out here. that one and get a mark one belt inbound yeah and that can be replicated four times then only thing we need is also power power will be taking from this part and then it'll just be going down and go somewhere i don't know uh i'm gonna get like something like this maybe uh but that is now this is actually all we need to do for the smelter uh, so i just replicate it and connect the belts and this is what it looks like when it's connected. We're going to go down into our service level and we have the lights, we have the accessible. And as you're running, you can also run down here. I am going to use Mark II belts because this module can consume and deliver, if we're talking iron or copper, uh, 120. And that means you can get this going as soon as you have the Mark II belts, which is also going to be super nice and super handy. So uh, there we have the first module. This is now ready to take it in. Let's move on to the next module. So let's start with the next module. We've loaded the default template again and uh, from here we're going to add a constructor constructors are also just one tile wide so we can build them if we go this way then they kind of overlap a little bit with our walkway so let's turn them the other way around and just try to see where we can get a sense of location and let's see this will be and uh, one two three this will be inbound and then we'll test it immediately and that will be here and i will be building it a Mark one, so we put it here and then it clicks to enter. And then on this side, we have here. That's a little bit too close, isn't it? But the question is, can it be a little bit too closer? That's probably gonna be too close. Let's try something. Well, maybe you want to align it as well. So this is where we get into uh, uh, clipping, clipping country here. That one. So this works, and it actually doesn't look awful. Uh, there's a, this uh, rubbery thing is supposed to sort of be connecting. The question is, does it connect or does it need to go a little bit further out? Uh, this is what we need to test down here because you're gonna be building exactly the same thing uh, down here. So we can build uh, this part as well. This will be inbound, inbound, inbound. Best update of, best part of update eight is when you stack is melted uh, sort of sort of on top of each other it doesn't rotate anymore isn't that amazing um that's funny uh, that's the outbound and let's see mark one sorry no all oh, right this now has to be different all right so th some constraints about this is actually uh, dictated by now by the size and uh, we make have to make one two and three this will now be the output of this so we get the output, let's make it a Mark 1, go in here. So that means it works. It looks very neat and uh, lovely, and that means we can do it this way, and that means we can also do, let's get the, that's gonna be a, oh no, don't want a smart splitter, we just want a normal conveyor splitter here. And we can now get inbound, and a Mark 1. So at this point, it should be pretty obvious how to do the rest of it, and we'll just put eight of these in here that will be able to if they were talking about like iron uh, iron ingots or iron plates for example this is the intention of it for example then we could uh, consume 30 each that would be 240 so this is the final build for the constructors uh, one note is that uh, yes if this is working on 30 each one each one then it's eight by times 30 that's 240 but it could also be something that uses less so i'm going to make this blueprint with these modules here the conveyor belts and that will just be um, that'll just be fine for for us for now to do uh, that with conveyor belt two, and then you can easily upgrade. It's much easier to upgrade it when you have the materials than to downgrade it when you don't have the materials. Now there is of course the caveat with this is that these builds require uh, a little bit of steel from here. Uh, no, that's not even steel. Oh, that's not even cool enough. Uh, let's have a look here in this case. Uh, this is what it requires. It does require a little bit of silica. It does require a little bit of quartz. I think that's worth going out and just making, tapping one mine and just building a little box of each because otherwise you have to build all of the aesthetics in terms of the lighting just for yourself. So let's get that in, but I'm trying to avoid uh, the steel in, uh, in these builds because I want to make sure that you can build it faster. So now we have a smelter 
and we have a constructor and they're ready so you can for example make you can make anything that comes out of a constructor really at this point uh, with this build and of course if you don't um, if you need something that is more than one belt then you can just get another belt for example have the right side come into level level zero for example here um, you can do that. So you can you can do all sorts of things in uh, in terms of this, or you can use the space below. That is the service floor, but the top floor is the way it is right now. So now that we have smelters and constructors, we're gonna get get more. But let's also make a start and an end to each of these uh, locations. And uh, I'll be making the start over here. And basically, what I want to make sure is that we can get up to this location, and then it looks uh, neat. Aside from this, so we're going to be using some uh, alternate recipes and uh, just trying to figure out how I want to do it. I, oops, that's definitely not correct. We're just going to make basically a ramp up here, and let's actually get this one, and these will go here. And we want we're making it next to it so that we can kind of align it with it there. Then we are going to get some ramps or tiled walls. And this is the tile, too fast tile wall. We actually want it like this. Overlapping, partial overlapping designer. That doesn't make sense. That does not make any sense. Uh, we'll just do it from here then. There. And. Yeah. Alright. And then on this side. Mm, this is now. I'm going to be choosing to do for walls. Uh, I'm going to do this, this door here. Because I think it's pretty cool to have a door on either side. Whether you don't want to do that, that's up to you if you're building it. Oh, uh, it's sliding away. Here, and we can make, make the triangles. They are here. That one, and that one. And make the triangle over here. And there. So now we need to get the ramp up in the middle. So let's get this ramp and that will go all the way to this location and likewise here so that goes up here and then we can uh, we can we need to also get the rest of it done here and uh, i'm going to be overlapping see if i do this it's not going to look ugly so we have to uh, do a little bit of, a, of an interesting thing i'm going to use these new half foundations i think they're really cool they have a a good opportunity to go into locations and wow that's a long I also say for just a small base here and let's see that is good so I'm gonna build it here because that helps us a lot with all the other stuff that means I can now build that one I can build um, a normal wall let's make a normal wall here there we go so we need to build it here and the irony is that it's actually the easiest way is to just use that location there we go we can use our the, the new function and somehow that is not working there we go okay and from here i'm just gonna set it for this location press h and then we can just notch it over to where we want it and take this out afterwards so that is an extremely simple build here. The only thing we need to do in terms of sort of inbounds and outbounds, I would like to make sure that I have an opportunity to get power in and out. So I'm going to make power on the, as sort of nodes here. There. And then as we go in, then we are going to make sure that we get power from here. And that gate needs to, this could very well be where I want to get it in. So why are we not getting um, a wall outlet? There seems like a good idea. So we get here and here so we can actually get power from outside above the door and then get in and that will connect to the next power outlet over on the other one when we start connecting. I'm going to assume that you get power, the, the inputs up from the ground, but if you get it somewhere else, you can knock some of these walls down and get it in from the side or, or these walls here as well. So that is basically, uh, we're going to be putting some lights as well, but this is basically what the, the start is going to look like. I want the end to look exactly like this, the same, so uh, we can just copy that over here and then we can uh, make some slight adjustments to it. And so the ending segment will obviously be the same, except turned the other way. And uh, what we want to do here for the ending segment is mm, not the same, actually. We are going to get in here and I'm going to take out this part here because the ending segment will always be a location where I will be placing a where is it called it's 
an awesome tank. So I'll incorporate an awesome tank into every single one of our builds. And that will be probably here. Let me see if I can move it out. Yep, uh, that looks good. And can I move closer? No, but I can't move. Yeah, so I want it all the way in the corner. So we're going to have an awesome sink in here. That should be pretty straightforward. Then I am going to get the uh, inbounds here. That will be here. This will be exactly the middle. Middle will be coming from there. This is where the inbound come in. And I'm going to set it up in the top, uh, top area. And then we're going to have some kind of uh, storage box. Uh, at this point, I you can use the bigger storage boxes, but I am actually going to use the small storage boxes in this case. The reason I'm using the small storage boxes is because, well, I am... Um, uh, really? Okay. And I want to make sure that you have it available. If you're building steel, then you don't necessarily have the steel available. So we built a storage box here. It looks nice. And let's get these in here. Here. And we're going to get a little... Uh, What's it called? It's called a display sign there, where we can display what is on this one. Shenanigans. Ugh. Um, and then we go in on the other side. And then what do we need to do? Well, we need to make sure that we have an option for uh, building. So we are going to use a smart build splitter for this, obviously. And that smart splitter will be placed. Yeah. And that will go. Let's make it this with a Mark II belt. Let's also do it properly this part. Oh, come on. It's got to be possible, right? There we go. Nice and crisp. Always 90 degree turns. Never exceptions, except when exceptions are necessary. There, and uh, then we just have a... Going down. Mark 2, inbound, Mark 2, inbound, and I will be saying you will be any, you will be none, and you will be overflow. There we go. And that means it comes in, it goes into the box, and any overflow will go over to this location. And we need to hook up that part. And it integrates quite nicely. Uh, you can make this, but I don't think it looks better if you uh, if you do this. But you can you can do that as you uh, as you choose. I think it looks a bit weird. So it's also a matter if you are uh, moving, then it's easier to jump on in here. So I'm gonna leave it open like this, and uh, that's it. But what if we have two outputs? Well, then we're gonna have a little bit more spaghetti inside, and uh, let me just show you how that's uh, that's gonna work out. But because you could be in a situation where you have stuff like this, where you make steel pipes on one side and steel beams on the other side. So this is the two output. Uh, it's a little bit more spaghetti down here, but it is definitely possible. The first thing it comes in, and then this is where you have to set the two items here. Each of those items will then go into a splitter, a smart splitter, where it'll be prioritized here, and then any overflow will be going back, merging into this merger, and then going into the awesome sink as well. So that's uh, basically how it's gonna work. And so now you have all this. So now we have uh, constructors, smelters, starter, end with one storage, end with two storage. Only one thing I want to make before we just show how cool it is when you can stamp it down so quickly. And that is, of course, the foundry. Now that you have seen the design principle, then we can just show it what looks on top. Uh, exactly the same foundry is put here and it's gonna be in here. So this will be the steel ingots. This is the alternate st solid steel ingot. I recommend using this on always, always. I've sent it down to 30 of 30. And that gives 45 for each of those. So basically this module takes 120 iron, 120 coal, and smelts the iron, gets it in here, and output comes 180 uh, steel ingots ready for processing. And uh, downstairs, if we look at it, there's a little bit more spaghetti than uh, previously, but still very neat. We now have two inputs here. This is an input, and uh, this is an input as well. And then we have the output up top. Is that correct? Yes, output up top. And that follows all the line down here and then continues uh, into the next module. So that is yet another module. Now we have all the modules and it's all we need to do now is show how awesome it is when you actually start stamping them down, how quickly you can make some really cool builds. As Dawn hits our beautiful pyramid factory, well, skeleton of a pyramid factory, it is time for us to get started on building the using the blueprints and see what, uh, what the magic really is. First, let's have a look out here in the... Uh, in the wild, where we've been gathering stuff, we're getting iron and uh, coal coming in. They're coming in here. 
and they are now ready and they'll be ready up in these two locations one iron one coal and what i need to do now is uh, actually pretty simple so what i want to do is i want to build a design that starts with a module start then it's going to have two smelters so i can get 100 240 of each product inbound because i'm going to assume that as soon as i get the steel uh, steel uh, beams then i can upgrade everything to mark three belts. so i might as well design it for that and then I'm going to use one uh, generic constructor module. And then I'm going to be storing two items out of this. That's it. Then we can look over on this side and the, see all we need. This is really nice that you can just tag these. And you uh, can also see that you can subscribe and join on Twitch or support on Patreon. So those are cool things that we can see here. So all we need to do now is go in and we start with the start module. And it will just uh, need to be aligned. I put this blocker over in the corner so that I'm, it's much easier to align it. We use the usual alignment with notching to make sure that it's correct. That is going to be the first module. And now, can I do this? And then it will be, yeah, okay, that's the other modules. And then they can only just go between these. So I'm going to go into a steel smelter. We have to make sure that, look at the um, output here. We want to make sure that we are aligning it. We are switching to blueprint mode so that I can just hit it in here. Uh, this, you can see that there are orange arrows at the lower left-hand corner pointing in. So that should be facing the start. That's one. These ones are tileable. That's the whole point of this. It's completely tileable. That's the second one. And then we're going to go into... Uh, after we have two of those, we are going to get the generic constructor. That will be here. And we just don't need to make sure that's correct. And then we have the generic two storage output like that and that is how quickly you can build it of course it's not working because things do not uh, connect inside but that is a very minor part of a for for us to do so what i'm going to do is i am going to prepare it so that we have uh, let's see oh it always open there we go uh, whatever there we go and you can see lights are not on uh, belts are not coming in here are the belts they will need to go into this this location and this location um, and uh, let's just fix all those things so we can uh, get ready to hook things up. So now I've uh, hooked up all the power poles inside and I've hooked up all of the belts inside. Now in order for this to really work, you can uh, you can feed it in with a Mark 1 uh, belt or a Mark 2 belt if that's what you have at the moment. Uh, but I want to show you sort of the final form. So I'm going to show you where I've, uh, I'm using the Mark 3 belt belts. So all I need to do now, power is hooked up. All the lights are on. Look how much light there is actually in here. It's super nice. I'm going to bring it here. And I'm going to bring you here. And now it, it better work. So what happens is, if you've been sort of following along with the math, then you will also know that it comes 120 into the first module, which ends here. And then 120 into the second module. But on the outbound side, what we're getting is, and this is up on this part, we're getting 280. And if you take 2 times 180 on one belt, it needs to be a Mark IV belt, but you don't have Mark IV belts. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to take my Mark III belt and sort of loop it around from the first module, bypass the second module, bypass half of the constructor module, and uh, then it goes in here, takes the second half of the constructor module, and then that means we get 180 into, into the first. So we get 180 into these assemblers, and then our constructors, and 180 into these constructors. We've not set the recipe, but I'm going to do that now. I am going to say, um, which one do I have where? Uh, I've also marked it. This is pipes. So I'm going to make pipes on this side. So the thing is, this is making pipe. That takes 30 per minute. And here I make beams that take 60 per minute. So that means these two together take 90 per minute. If I copy, paste, paste, and paste. If I copy, paste, paste, and paste, that means 90 for the first row. 90 for the second one, that's 180. That corresponds to the first uh, smelter module. And 180 for the second module, consist, uh, com uh, yeah, matching up with the output from the second smelter module. That means we now have 360 steel, uh, steel ingots coming into this generic constructor module that we just built one, one of. And that will now go in and then we'll be outputting steel pipes and steel beams and at the rate of uh, this is uh, 100 this is well hold on 15 plus 15 plus 60 beams per minute and uh, was it 20 
80 pipes per minute. Very, very nice numbers. And the best thing is, I have another location here. So I can just stamp down the same thing one more time. And uh, we'll have twice as much. That takes care of a lot of the steel for early to mid game. The idea is also we can just take it from here. We can lead it up. We can lead it somewhere else. Because we now have all the belt, all the beams, all the... Um, pipes we need it'll never jam because uh, any excess from either of those will go into uh, into the awesome thing so it's designed so it cannot jam i hope that was a a showcase of how awesome the the, the these modular designs are and uh, how you can just use these generic modules to build pretty much anything you want i'm just going to show you just a quick flash over here we have a uh, very far away we have uh, the quartz over here so i'm just going to show you what it looks like when we build a combined quartz and silica uh, location here so we have the quartz mount coming in from up there and now it's all about just stamping down the blueprints we're going to start with the starter module and it, it's the only one that actually takes a little bit of effort to place make sure that it's aligned to that corner it is there i'm going to make another one next to it isn't this awesome? And then we're going to make uh, another blueprint. That's going to be just the constructors. Default constructor. Making sure that it is pointing the right way. Uh, yes, we have that outbound. One, two. Then I'm going to get the default enders. Uh, the stoppers. And they will all be the ones here with two outputs. Because it's both silica and uh, quartz. And that's it. That's how, it, that's how easy it is. Just hook it up and it's ready. I think that this is uh, just really illustrating how awesome these modular blueprints are. So if that has not deserved your like and subscription, I don't know what they will. Thank you very much for watching this. And of course, these blueprints are all available to Patreon supporters right now, and they will be available to everyone uh, when uh, early access, uh, when Satisfactory Update 8 comes to early access. So I have time to just polish them and just make sure that there are no errors left in them. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, take care. And as always, stay effective.